Dr. Sinha, sir, give us a five minutes, sir, please. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. No problem, sir. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Amma. Sir, sir, sir. Yeah. Yeah, tell me. We can can start. we start now? Yes, sir. Only five members joined. Kusuma and uh, Nutan. Sir, we, we, all are, sir yes. we are here in the institute, sir. We are seeing in the projector. We are seeing in the projector, sir. Okay, okay. That's great. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. A yeah, warm welcome to international uh, webinar on um, various uh, artificial intelligence applications using Python programming. Today, 
I'm going to demonstrate group one project uh, practicals and group two project uh, practicals. So before going to demonstration, I would like to brief out uh, what are the contents you need to know before going to implement your internship projects. Okay, so yeah. yeah. So this is my background, everybody knows. Uh, I have done a double PhD, one PhD in data, data mining and one more PhD in data science at IIIT, Indian Institute of Information Technology. My Master of Technology with specialization Artificial Intelligence and a Bachelor of Technology with specialization Computer Science and Engineering. And uh, uh, these, these are the uh, common uh, uh, things. And uh, so far, uh, uh, these are my uh, research areas like uh, right now I'm doing at the uh, University of Newcastle, uh, predicting and detecting groundwater, uh, climate change uh, prediction detection by using machine and deep learning techniques. Especially uh, we are uh, finding uh, what is the level of groundwater, how many contaminants are presented, that is called PFAs and uh, utilizing machine and deep learning techniques to develop uh, more accurate and efficient environmental monitoring solutions. These are my uh, interested uh, specializations like data science, artificial intelligence, machine and deep learning, no. cyber security, health data analytics, and water quality and pollution control, environmental science and chemistry, environmental monitoring and remediation technologies. And uh, these are uh, uh, my uh, publications. So far, uh, I have published 150 papers in uh, reputed uh, IEEE, Springer, Elsevere, Inderscience, and UGC Care List, Web of Science, Science Citation Index, uh, etc. And uh, these are the URLs. Uh, you can go through uh, after a completion of my presentation, I'm going to uh, share with you my PPT so that you can uh, check uh, these URLs, which areas yeah. I have published uh, various uh, journals. Mm -hmm. And uh, before going to our topic, uh, we are doing uh, AI in uh, 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 policing, uh, tracking uh, uh, cyber security incidents happened by using AI, IoT, blockchain technologies. So where you are getting data? How do you can extract data from various sources? So if you are using mobile or uh, laptop, within 60 seconds, how many users are connected to this internet world? What is internet? network of networks. What is network? Interconnection between the computers in the fashion of local area network, wide area network, metropolitan area network, etc. So within 60 seconds, how many users are connected? Can you imagine? So 6,94,444 hours watched in the Netflix, 1.8 million emails sent in the Google Gmail, Gmail is a best consumer of cloud computing. Somewhere else, Gmail server at USA. We are accessing 24 by 7 service from the Gmail account. And 3.8 million such queries, 4.5 million videos view. So that means within 60 seconds, how many users are connected to this internet world? How do I can find out? by using URL called www.internetlivestatistics.com. If you are using, we can uh, find the number of statistics about the number of users are connected within 60 seconds. So where you are getting this data? From various sources, maybe bank transactions, maybe Walmarts, Maybe weather forecasting from uh, any garden, any radar or uh, any NASA data and uh, traffic data. We are getting various uh, uh, files from various sources. 
So within 60 seconds, the backbone for uh, data we are uh, taking from uh, system server data center. The backbone for cloud computing is a data center. From the data center, we are uh, collecting data from uh, various sources. If you, if you want a State Bank of India uh, transaction data uh, with the permission of State Bank of India, we can get it from the cloud. Cloud is nothing but internet-based technology. The backbone for cloud is uh, data center and virtualization. Data center is nothing but a collection of uh, high integrated servers at one place is called data center. And virtualization is the ability to perform multiple tasks in a single system with the help of with the help of popular virtualization technologies like uh, VMware, Hypervisor, Zen, Virtual Iron, etc. If you see the URL uh, www.internetlivestats.com, you come to know number of internet users in the world. Can you read this number? Very huge number. 5 billion 306 million 169,641 internet users are connected in this world. You can check in the internet www.internetlivestats.com. Why, sir, you are explaining? Because we require data from various sources. So how many users are connected within the 60 seconds? If you see the same uh, uh, slide, the number of users are increasing. See, automatically, the numbers are increasing in this slide. I have incorporated in the PowerPoint presentation slide. That means automatically data center uh, size also increases. That means infrastructure also increases. By using this URL, you come to know number of users. Usually, I am a corporate trainer and a professor and... Um, uh, I'm giving uh, trainings for U.S. students who are pursuing their master's and Ph.D. I'm doing their assignments. I'm doing their projects. I'm doing their internship uh, projects uh, in this uh, domain like uh, data science, artificial intelligence, big data technologies, cloud computing, machine and deep learning, augmented reality and virtual reality, etc. And today, I'm concentrating on your group one and group two applications. I'm going to demonstrate with the practicals on various data sets. So I'm a corporate, corporate trainer who are having 10 years of experience. I'm explaining I'm with the practical demonstration on these uh, 13 subjects like introduction to data science, Python programming, probability and statistics, data structures and algorithms, database and data warehousing, and artificial intelligence, data mining, natural language processing, big data technologies, artificial neural networks, mission and deep learning, augmented reality and virtual reality. Why I am explaining all these 13 subjects? These subjects information is required to implement your group one and group two subjects with efficient and effectively if you want to uh, implement with the great accuracy of your uh, project. So these are the current uh, business applications and case studies. Uh, right now I'm implementing on groundwater data and climate change, data analytics using AI and uh, machine and deep learning techniques. And the past uh, four years, 2020 onwards, I'm in the data science research laboratory. I have implemented nearly 152 projects on various uh, health domain, educational domain, weather forecasting, traffic data analytics, and viral diseases, Omicron virus, Ebola virus, and prostate, breast, skin, and lung cancer prediction and detection by using uh, artificial intelligence and statistical machine and deep learning techniques. And uh, before going to uh, our uh, data sets, uh, how do you collect the data? How do you measure the data? If you press capital A on the keyboard, 
system cannot understand capital A. Why? Internally, it converts into ASCII value for capital A. Capital A value is 67. And uh, if you divide it by 2, because computer understands only binary language, that is called 1s and zeros. If you press capital A, system cannot understand. Internally, it converts into ASCII format. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Each keyboard, uh, approximately 206 to 208, keys are presented in the keyboard. Capital A value is 67. If you divide it by 2, you are getting binary equivalent number is 100001. That is a capital A value. In, within fraction of seconds, it is converting and it is giving output on the monitor. That means computer understands only binary language. How do you measure the data? 1 bit is equal to 0 or 1. 4 bits is equal to 1 nibble. 8 bits is equal to 1 byte. 4 bytes equal to 1 word. 4 bytes equal to 1024 bytes. 1024 bytes equal to 1 kilobyte. 1024 kilobytes is equal to 1 megabyte. 1024 megabytes is equal to 1 gigabyte. 1024 gigabytes is equal to 1 terabytes. 1024 terabytes equal to 1 petabytes. 1024 petabytes is equal to 1 hexabyte. 1024 hexabyte is equal to 1 octabyte. 1024 octabyte is equal to 1 jettabyte. Hi, I am Robo. My speed is 1 terabytes and my memory is 1 jettabyte. Before that Robo movie, we don't know the terminology. It was there. But uh, it came into the public after seeing that movie. There is a terminology. How do we measure the huge volume of data? Thanks to di Director Shankar and Rajni sir, they have used the terminology jettabyte and terabytes. 1024 jettabytes equal to 1 yottabytes. 1024 yottabytes is equal to 1 brontobyte. 1024 brontobyte is equal to 1 geobyte. 1024 geobytes is equal to infinity. This is the way we are measuring the data in data science. If you see same terminology in mathematical uh, representation, one kilobyte is 10 power 3, one, one megabyte is 10 power 6, one gigabyte is 10 power 9, one terabyte is 10 power 12, petabyte is 10 power 15, exabyte is 10 power 18, jettabyte is 10 power 20. 21, yottabyte is 10 power 24, brontobyte is 10 power 27, geobyte is 10 power 30. This is the way we are measuring the data in mathematical terminology. Jargon of measuring the data in data science. So this syllabus is not required. Data science is uh, uh, not required right now. And this is the syllabus. This is the Python programming. If you don't know also, no problem. I'll teach you and I'll train you how to do very simple coding for your internship projects by using Python programming. Python is so popular because of rich number of libraries like NumPy, SciPy, Panda, Scikit-learn, sklearn, Theano, Matplotlib, TensorFlow, Keras, and PyTorch, Pillow, etc. So there are two types of Python programming like uh, core Python programming and advanced Python programming. If you want to do your projects, go for advanced Python programming. Then uh, we have um, uh, statistics subjects and uh, data structures and algorithms, how effectively you can use your algorithm and which approach is going to help you like uh, dynamic programming, divide and conquer approach, and um, greedy approach, branch and bound, etc. Then uh, you can have a database management system for backend. Uh, we are using uh, uh, two types of databases like relational databases and non-relational databases. Relational databases like uh, with the help of uh, SQL, MySQL, Teradata, DB2, MS Access, we are creating the tables with the help of uh, schema, relation, and syntax-based. 
based on the rules and regulations we are uh, creating the table collection of tables is called a database that is called a relational database and if you are not using uh, any schema relation table but uh, unstructured data like audio video text graphics animation how do you can create a database with the help of non relational database tools like uh, mongo database hive hbase zookeeper uh, etc cassandra etc then uh, artificial intelligence see here i am going to cover uh, simple uh, uh, theory like uh, what is uh, introduction of artificial intelligence then uh, what are the major concepts you need to concentrate on that artificial intelligence like machine learning neural networks deep learning natural language processing reinforcement learning and uh, computer vision robotics knowledge representation and reasoning and generative adversarial networks transfer learning these are the latest advancements in artificial artificial intelligence like um, machine learning deep learning everybody knows and the latest concepts like uh, gans so how uh, one year baby five years baby 10 years 15 and so on uh, 60 years how the baby face changes over the period facial expressions in order to develop such type of applications recently japanese one scientist has been developed that application by using generative adversarial networks facial expressions changes over the period so that is called gans then transfer learning explainable ai federated learning generative ai etc these are the advanced concepts right now i am giving a training on this technologies in artificial intelligence and especially training on generative ai uh, we can develop all chatbot applications by using these concepts like generative adversarial networks and variational and auto encoders auto regressive models transformers probability 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 uh, graphical models flow based models energy based models self attention mechanisms and uh, neural auto regressive density estimators deep generative models so these these are the latest concepts in uh, advanced concepts in artificial intelligence that is called generative ai so then this is data mining Uh, we are extracting meaningful interested patterns from the huge volume of data like data sets you are you are you are uh, collecting uh, um, cyber security incidents data or uh, traffic uh, data or uh, ai for uh, police tracking uh, information data so with the help of uh, classification clustering association rule mining outlier detection and recommend or engine we are performing and we are predicting and detecting and recognizing various kinds of applications then uh, natural language processing i don't know chinese but i i would like to translate uh, chinese to hindi hindi to chinese by using various translators are available right now and um, these are the 10 topics are very very important in uh, natural language processing sir i don't know natural language processing no problem just i'll give you small introduction study of different languages or study of linguistics is called natural language processing and we can have a, a language consists of uh, grammar and alphabets sentences words paragraphs text tables graphs etc so here are the 10 uh, concepts like tokenization parts of speech tagging that is called pos tagging named entity recognition like uh, narendra modi face i am giving as in input to, to my system my system is recognizing yes this is narendra modi sir uh, face like uh, application parsing sentiment analysis text classification machine translation word embeddings language modeling information retrieval then comes to the big data which data i can call it as a big data traditional systems are unable to process the data that's why i can call it as such data is called big data 
maybe my system my server unable to load the data unable to process the data such kind of data i can call it as a big data maybe terabytes petabytes exabytes octabytes jettabytes brontobyte and geobytes so there are uh, two important uh, technologies we are using under uh, big data like uh, hadoop and spark hadoop is a framework which integrates n number of tools and techniques and um, uh, for uh, statistical data i mean for static data um, uh, we can extract uh, our own interested analytics by using hadoop and uh, spark is a uh, extension version of hadoop but uh, it is a streaming based uh, technology it is 100 times better than hadoop environment and there are various tools and techniques we are using in this big data then in order to perform minute level features by using uh, artificial neural networks we are implementing so here we are using single layer perceptron multi layer perceptron self organizing maps etc this is the prerequisition for uh, machine and deep learning techniques so machine learning is nothing but learning from the observational data and um, with the help of supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning, we are solving the problems. Supervised learning is nothing but based on the label, based on the target class, we are classifying the data. Example, in a class, 30 students are there. Based on uh, gender, I am classifying the data, male versus female. So that is uh, comes under supervised learning. So by using uh, various techniques like uh, random forest and a support vector machine and naive based classification, logistic regression and uh, K nearest neighbor, Bayesian networks, etc. Then unsupervised learning is nothing but I don't know about the data, but um, I don't know target class. I don't know the label but I would like to classify the data based on the similarity measure. How do you calculate a similarity measure? By using Euclidean distance. How do you calculate Euclidean distance? The formula is square root of x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square. If, if you are having two points like x1, x2, y1, y2. Based on that one, we are calculating similarity distance based on the Euclidean distance. So we are classifying uh, data into clusters. Each cluster having its own similar behavior in the objects. So by using K-means clustering, C-means clustering, fuzzy C-means clustering, agglomerative clustering, density-based clustering, etc. Next approach is reinforcement learning. So uh, reinforcement learning is nothing but based on the punishment and reward, we are solving the problems, especially in gaming applications. If you are a if you are a very if you are a developer in gaming, so you are using reinforcement learning approach. There are various algorithms like SARSA, DQN, DDPG, A3C. SARSA is nothing but lambda state action, reward state action with eligibility traces. DQN is nothing but deep Q network that is discrete. DDPG is nothing but a deep deterministic policy gradient approach. A3C is nothing but asynchronous advantage uh, actor critic algorithm. So these are the three approaches we are using under machine learning concepts. Then uh, the extension of machine learning, we can call it as a deep learning. Learning from the observational data with a deep manner by increasing n number of input and hidden layers. And we are increasing uh, uh, number of hidden and uh, we are using bias, we are using input layers, hidden layers, activation functions, uh, and uh, various uh, hyper uh, tuning parameters, etc. That is called deep learning. And here there are three important uh, uh, famous algorithms right now. Everybody is using convolutional neural networks. If you are doing image classification, go for CNN. 
If you are doing audio and video based recognition applications, go for recurrent neural networks. If you are using uh, very complicated applications, audio, video, unstructured data, go for LSTM, long short term memory networks, then auto encoders. So the applications related uh, unstructured data like audio, video, text, graphics, animation, we are choosing the latest subject called augmented reality and virtual reality. Here we are using various um, concepts like uh, HMD, head mounted displays, augmented reality for virtual reality for tracking systems, rendering, interaction design, spatial audio, haptic feedback, and there are various tools and techniques under uh, AR and VR technologies. So these are the number of projects I have implemented uh, under Data Science Research Laboratory with the help of my students, uh, uh, MTech and PhD students, research scholars. We have implemented 150 and yesterday uh, two more projects uh, Ramesh sir has given, uh, Group 1 and Group 2 projects. Uh, uh, titles I have implemented uh, by using Python and uh, various algorithms. Today I am going to demonstrate the uh, group one and group two projects uh, with the program uh, demonstration. So okay. these are the yeah these are the various projects like uh, predicting policing, healthcare predictive analytics, educational data mining, urban planning and uh, infrastructure optimization, environmental monitoring, like various applications, irrespective of the domain, irrespective of the domain, not only health data analytics and uh, not only social networks data, weather okay. forecasting, various applications I have implemented. See here, uh, nearly uh, 152 projects uh, with the help of my uh, research scholars. Uh, these are the 150 projects I have implemented. Yesterday, uh, Ramesh sir has given a AI for a smart policing, that project, group one project, and a group two project uh, uh, like seaport security management, uh, uh, predicting, detecting uh, various incidents happened in that seaport security management, how do you can use AI statistical mission and deep learning techniques in order to predict and detect. I am going to demonstrate AI for smart policing and seaport security management prediction and detection. So before going to my topic, uh, there is very interesting uh, uh, question. See here, what is our death date? Sir, what is this question, sir? Everybody is celebrating uh, our birth date. We know our birth date. That's why we are celebrating. But see, being human being, we need to know our death date also. Until unless, if you are giving uh, quality of data as input, uh, approximately we can predict our death date. See, I have implemented uh, by using life to vector AI model Model is nothing but simplified version of the reality. Very interesting question. Please listen carefully. I'm going to demonstrate right now. So I'm using AI model called life to vector. It is a natural language processing uh, model. And uh, by, by using uh, deep learning techniques like CNN, RNN, LSTM to generate vector representation that captures non and contextually rich information about various uh, aspects of right. life. Yeah, the life to vector AI model takes uh, various inputs such as biological data, lifestyle. Sir, yeah, please tell me. Sir, um, this this is a free meeting, so it is ending in five minutes, sir. Uh, shall I send a new link again, sir, for Zoom meeting? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Please I'll... start the shoes. Yeah, yes, no sir. Problem. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is life to vector AI model takes various inputs such as biological data, lifestyle factors and environmental influences to predict an individual's potential lifespan. So if you are giving uh, the qualitative data like uh, the quality of data like input, uh, biological data like date of birth, height, weight, lifestyle, factors, genes, etc. I'm getting the output like lifespan. Suppose uh, I have checked my all the details as uh, input I have given and uh, it is predicted my lifespan is uh, 71 years. 
72 years like that it is giving so so this is the program uh, can i end the session right now are you sending a link yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah, please so uh, now i am going to demonstrate uh, uh, this uh, uh, application like right type python program how a potential lifespan prediction can be made based on various input factors such as biological data data birth height, weight, lifestyle factors, and genetic uh, information, etc. Wait, wait a second, I am going to join uh, with another um, link so that it cannot be disturbed. Uh, let me check. So two minutes is there. Uh, let me explain. Uh. So I'm uh, importing life to vector, import uh, matplotlib. That is a life to vector is a model and matplotlib uh, is for generating graphs, numpy for numerics generation, numerical python, define a function to predict lifespan based on input data. So just a placeholder for predicting logic and example random lifespan prediction and uh, then predict lifespan if you are feeding the input data. Like see, data birth I have given, height, weight, sample data I have taken, predict lifespan and uh, plot the prediction. So uh, I can uh, predict the lifespan is see in the bottom 95 years. Okay, so that is, uh, this is the output of the lifespan. So now I'm going to demonstrate this one. Uh, please um, see. Uh, if you don't know, uh, even uh, Python, how simple it is, I am going to show you within one minute, you can concentrate. If you don't know Python also, just go to Google and uh, you can uh, search for uh, Python software. So it is uh, uh, very simple. My screen is visible? Yes, sir. Yeah, Python software. So you can uh, download, it is a 22 MB. So go to, welcome to Python here. See here, latest version is there. Uh, uh, Python 3.12.3, just download it. So I'm downloading in the downloads folder. Just uh, double click it, you can install. Like, uh, see, you can check uh, where this, uh, see here I have- Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please tell me. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir, but all of us here have a little idea. Yeah, we have worked on projects uh, with Python. So yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm skipping. Yeah. I'm skipping. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. No need to install because everybody knows. Maybe you are experts. Yeah. Maybe you we are don't expert. want you to put effort from basics, sir. That's it. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. So now I'm uh, closing the this session because of time duration. I'll join yes, with another link. Okay. I'm stopping right now.